thank you all so much for having me out. Uh, I look forward to hopefully sharing some ideas with you about how your organization can overcome some of the challenges that you may be facing when it comes to collecting and, and analyzing data. Um, so first of all, I want to give you just a little bit of background about Qualtrics, who we are in case you don't know. I'll run through that very quickly, and then we're going to dive into, um, again, challenges you may be facing when it comes to making data-driven decisions. So first of all, Qualtrics is an online data collection platform that helps organizations all over the world collect um, and analyze their data so they can make better decisions. Uh, we have you know, 5,000 customers in 75 countries. We have over 1,300 academic institutions worldwide that use it. And in 2013, sent out over a billion surveys. So it's kind of what the platform looks like. We have things that cover you know, customers, market, and employee data. Uh, we have organizations that use Qualtrics for anything from voice of the customer to ad testing, you know, website feedback, employee engagement, and a range of things. Um, and so there's a lot of ways that organizations around the world are collecting and analyzing data. And that also goes from throughout an organization, whether it's an employee development, marketing, research, operations, Qualtrics is used for a range of different capacities. And the reasons why organizations use our platform is that it takes very flexible, advanced um, capability and combines it with a very easy interface, and it makes it something that's scalable throughout an organization. So that's a bit about Qualtrics and who we are. Now I want to talk about challenges that you face. Within most organizations, everyday decisions are made around customers, around the market, and around employees. These can be multi-billion dollar decisions, and you know better than I in your organization how many of these decisions are made with little to no data. And what is the impact on that? Not only from bad decisions that are made, but from opportunities that aren't realized because data isn't present. And so the question is, well, what are the objectives, or I mean, what are the, what are the obstacles that you face in your organization to making these kind of decisions? So first of all, uh, collecting data requires programming expertise. Again, I'm, I'm talking about problems that you face or reasons why data is not used. A lot of organizations aren't sure where to get started. Generating insight can take too long. By the time you get the insight back, the window was passed of opportunity. Collecting data and generating insight can be expensive. When collecting data, a lot of organizations are concerned about security and who owns the data. And then also there's an issue around response rates and making sure that you get a, a good amount of response rates. So we're going to talk about each of these and some things that Qualtrics has done to help other organizations overcome these problems. So first of all, how much expertise do you need to actually accomplish research in-house? Or if you're a market research agency, how can you use something that will allow you to do more projects? Because more projects typically means more revenue. And so we do provide a very sophisticated platform that's easy to use, but it's advanced enough to do everything you would want it to do. Um, we also can provide over 260 pre-built surveys with content to help you get started. And we've done that with a lot of organizations covering a lot of different things. And then complete report customization is helpful. And whether it's Qualtrics or some other platform, it's important to find these different elements to allow you to be able to, to do things quickly and easily. So now one of the questions is, okay, so we, we want to go and do something. How do we, how do we get started? How do we as an organization begin our own customer loyalty program or voice of the customer program? How many organizations here actually have something that does that? Anyone here do voice of the customer? A few, a few of you maybe? So one of the things that we recommend organizations start doing is something called NPS or Net Promoter Score. And I don't know if many of you have heard of what this is. It was uh, originally developed by um, a partner at Bain. And what NPS is, is it's a measure of customer loyalty. And the basic idea is you ask one question in a questionnaire that says something along the lines of, how likely are you to recommend our service to a friend or a colleague? And it's on a zero to a 10 point scale. Anyone that falls between zero and six is what's called a detractor, which means when they talk about your brand, it's not good. Anything between seven and eight, they're passive. And then everything between 9 and 10 means that they are a promoter, which means when they talk about your brand, they're promoting it. And the way that you get your net promoter score is you take the percent of promoters 
and you subtract it from the percent of detractors, and that will tell you what your overall customer loyalty score is. And again, it's, it's a measure of when people talk about your brand, is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? So net promoter score is something that we recommend, and it's a good platform to begin a voice of the customer process in your organization. Um, we do work with a lot of organizations doing this. We actually partnered with Bain to develop um, a one-question NPS and then a two-click report. So you can actually design your own N uh, NPS dashboard in about two clicks. And we also have other services that will help you build VOC programs, dashboards, reporting, conjoint analysis, other custom integrations you may do. Now, the other thing that I want to talk about is data. There's a lot of discussion in the industry about big data. And you've probably heard that a lot. Big data, big data, big data. That's what everyone's talking about. And that is important. But there's also an element of fast data. Big data is helpful, but if you don't get the insight back fast enough, you're going to miss opportunity. So does it matter? So the question is, you should expect data in real time. And does it matter? Yes, because fast data is really customer loyalty. And that will dramatically impact how customers think about your brand. There's a great quote here. Fast data allows organizations to improve their response times to customers, which answers the ultimate question of improving customer experience. So fast data and getting data and insights quickly makes a big difference. And not only would I say it's a measure of customer loyalty, but it also is a dramatic impact, or will create a dramatic impact on your market share based on how fast you can get insight. So we do help a lot of organizations get data real time with robust reporting and dashboards that can be used. But a lot of organizations we work with still use research partners, and that's fantastic. So the question is, when using a research partner, how can you still get fast data? Because typically, when you outsource a project, the turnaround time can be a little bit longer. But we've also worked with a lot of organizations that have successfully worked with research partners to get data quickly. And the best way that they do that, one example is DeVry University. One way that they do that, where they, they do projects in-house, but they also outsource a lot of projects, but they can still get data quickly because they use the same platform as their research provider. And what that allows for is they have the same data formats now, and they collaborate with their research partner. So as data comes into their partner, they can analyze it and be receiving insight while they're waiting for the more formal official reports from the research partners as well. So there is the ability to get faster data when using research partners. Another thing that organizations need to be thinking about is security. How secure is my data in a SaaS environment? And do we own our own data? And the answer is it depends. It really depends what platform you're using. A lot of organizations are shocked when they find out the data they've been gathering for years, they don't even own. And it can be used by that other provider to do whatever they want. And so you need to be looking for different certifications and standards for your SaaS data provider. These are things that we also provide, and we work with a lot of organizations in the healthcare industry, you know, European Safe Harbor Agreements. But it's important that you do analyze with the provider you're using, how secure is that data. Now, I want to take a moment and talk about response rates. This is something that is always the great enigma of online data collection. How can we get more people, a bigger representative sample, to uh, participate? So these are things that we have found as we've worked with organizations over the globe that help increase response rates. One, incentive management. Are you providing some kind of an incentive to get them to take your questionnaire. Two, what are the channels that you're using to get to different individuals? There's been a lot of discussion over the past two days around mobile deliverability, and I'll talk about that in a little more detail. Can you personalize the respondent experience? When they answer a question, do they see another question that does not apply to them? And if so, you're going to increase your dropout rates. Are there scheduled reminders? There's a university, Boise State University in the U.S., has over a 90% response rate from students. I don't know how many of you remember being a student and if you ever actually responded to questionnaires, but scheduled reminders make a very big difference. Are you transparent about the expectations and intentions of your questionnaire? And then is it fast? We found out dropout rates go dramatically higher once you pass 15 minutes. 
So you want to make it 15 minutes or less unless you have a much better incentive. And then is it interesting? Is it fun? So I want to talk about two of these in a little more detail. The first one is on channels. Mobile deliverability is key. In 2015, it's anticipated that mobile internet traffic will exceed desktop traffic. It's amazing. So you need to make sure that you have channels that will facilitate mobile use. So there's a lot of ways you can do that. There's uh, responsive device detection. One of the things we've helped organizations do, we found that um, attention span is a lot shorter when using mobile devices. And so there are organizations we work with where if you sit down at a desktop and you want to take the survey, they'll see 30 questions. But if someone pulls it up on a smartphone, it's 10 questions. Okay? So you can actually deliver a different experience based on what device they're using. And then that also goes for an online and an offline environment. Um, we, 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 we work with organizations doing both. And then how engaging is your questionnaire? You can get a lot of the same data, but provide interactive, interesting ways for them to respond. We call it a gamification. Is it an interesting interface for the respondents? That's something to think about as you're trying to increase response rates. One of the organizations that we work with that applied a lot of these principles is a group called Fast Shop in Brazil. And they basically wanted to get real-time NPS feedback, and they wanted to build more sophisticated projects. So they, they did that. They, they took every touch point that they, that they interacted with, whether it's phone sales, people in the store, newlyweds doing registration, uh, delivery services. They started gathering data at all these different touch points, and they started getting this data in real time. And so some of the benefits that they saw is they actually reduced their research time by 70%. They increased their survey response rates by 20%. Their NPS score, which will be directly correlated to revenue and profit, went up by 25% and they started winning some amazing customer service um, awards. So the bottom line difference, if you apply these things that I've talked about with being able to increase your response rates, being able to do projects faster, being able to you know, even expand your reach to who you're targeting through different channels, you will see a difference in engagement, speed, development costs, things like that. Now one thing that I want to take just the last minute to talk about, and I didn't talk about this initially, but is web engagement. One of the big questions that's been posed to us is, how do I take a web visitor and turn them into a customer? And so we launched a, a, a product called Site Intercept, which allows you to use web analytics and harvest those to serve up content on a website. So the way that it works is, and you can, you know, a lot of organizations find the what of visitors. They find out how long their visitors are on their site, what links they click on, what site they come from, what the search term was that they used to find their site. But very uh, rarely do they find out the why. How is the experience with the person interacting with your website? And so that's one thing we've helped organizations do as well, integrating with Adobe, um, you know, Google Analytics, and things like that to actually, based on certain behaviors and analytics, you can actually change the experience of individuals on a website. So a lot of organizations use Qualtrics right now because we can be scalable, secure, there's a lot of great products and things like that. So now I, what I want to do is take a minute. I'm going to um, invite up my colleague, uh, David Reyes, and he can, uh, we, we, we can take questions in English or in Spanish. <laughs> 